if I if I think about a subject like like pushing fire, uh, you can approach this in different different ways. Yeah, like like semantic is one thing. Yeah, that's true. What is pushing? What is fire? That yeah, you're like, pushing? like like what, what, is, what is? But I think what what yeah. most most referring to is like a fireball or a sense of heat coming at you or a fireball sh visibly coming down yeah. the hallway. That's what this that's what, yeah. That's what most people. That's probably what people refer in the very first line and the very first moment when they were talking about potion fire. Um, and if I if, if in tech about that, if I if I ask the scientists what is fire, they would call it the flaming phenomena. Yeah. So a scientist, to me, would say, well, that fireball, that's fire, and it's being pushed by whatever it is that's yeah. pushing fire. But I don't think that was the con. I mean. When that terminology was developed in the fire service, there were, I mean, fire is the flaming process and probably everything bad that goes around that as well. And you push it from one place to the other just because you're, you're doing this or the other. Um, perspective on pu pushing fire. Well, it's true that you can push fire in some situations that you can push it. But it, it's probably more by by how and with, with with what with how and what okay it's um, wrong violation practices okay this is something probably that was very early days of PPV in Europe probably not having a full understanding of what we were doing or applying in configurations and layouts which were not meant to the proper uh, or not meant to be a, a proper PPV scenario, PPA scenario, what you want to do it, call it. Um, that for, is for pushing instance, fire. You, for instance, if you don't have an outlet or the outlet is you, too small or... Yeah, or you don't know where the fire is going, basically. Yeah, you, you think it's going to go that way, but basically there was an opening, there was less friction to go some other way, and then you push in, you push in fire, okay, you just, making a displacement of those fire gases through well, we can, yeah, it's a combination. It, yeah. yeah, and then again, we, we can get into that semantic uh, discussion that will get us n nowhere. I think well, something else... I, I, think I, mean, I think that's important about semantic. We we're going to get to yeah. that, but... Like, get back yeah, to but the sometimes the, the, the conversation is only about the semantic. We can talk about the semantic, but sometimes I, I fear that when we talk about pushing fire and stuff like that, and, and that we are... Uh, we're more, more focused on the terminology rather than in looking, trying to understand the phenomena and what we were doing bad, what we can do, where we actually, uh, what is it actually that we're doing? And we can think... Well, of, I think that both are important. Yeah, yeah but, uh, but sometimes the, the, it seems like many conversations when we have with some colleagues on this topic, they, they don't push beyond, they don't go beyond that, that, that point of understanding um where that um what that pushing fire is what's the actual what do we need to do in the foreground to actually avoid that, that well, you know? well when you say that so if we say if we say that there are two two versions of pushing fire you either say that pushing fire means you're pushing in that gas cloud of smoke yeah. and it ignites as a fireball coming down the yeah. hallway whatever uh, or if you define it as pushing sustained fire, meaning that, well, it doesn't really matter if it's a fireball coming because that will not ignite the next room, which will mean that it's a, just a sudden event and then it's gone. So my, my understanding is more that, okay, you got the convection column of that fire and you're basically changing where it goes to another place because it's got less friction loss or if it goes or because you just close whatever inlet outlet and you change that flow path that is basically what i would understand whether there is propagation fire extension and whatever that goes along into how long that process is sustained yes for. So that's okay yeah, so, so, yes, so if, it, if that if that if like you said with a fan you can have that for 10 minutes that you change. can have that for that 10 minutes we can see all those videos as well where People try, trying to do a uh, uh, transitional attack the way you shouldn't do it with full a cone on, on the window and then you see that there is a 
sort of fireball moving down the corridor elsewhere. And then you see that that phenomenon just takes uh, some seconds. And, uh, Unless you have a secondary fire in another compartment, then you can have sustained yeah. because the the air goes to the second compartment, but the water stays in the first yeah. compartment. True. So, uh, so, so that says is, you could you could by your stream make the fire worse in that example. Yeah. Continuously. Yeah. So rather than basing yourself in subpol recipes, this will push fire, this will not push fire, push fire doesn't exist, push fire is like that. I rather go into the critical thinking of understanding what I'm doing in in uh, every single time I do something in action on the on the foreground. So what I'm doing if I'm putting PPV fan, I'm enforcing a certain flow path in the whole building, just by the fact that I put that uh that um that PPV fan, well, I need to understand what are going to be the consequences, okay, which are going to be different whether I put the fire water on the fire right away, either from the outside, from the inside. You can, you can be changing the flow path in a way that it's not the desired flow path. But if you're putting water on the fire, then the consequences are going to be are going to be limited because the heat release rate of that fire, the amount of uh, energy that's going to be transferred, is going to be limited. So uh, that is for me the key right now. I would say that we have what is a younger generation of so firefighters coming. They have a higher level of education, the ability to understand the phenomenon. I think we need to move out from um, teaching with simple recipes and actually tell them, making them understand what they're doing on the fire. Okay. It's a little bit longer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but I do believe there it is possible to do it. And whenever I've seen that done, I've seen great results. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't. Yeah. And I don't think it's. I I I do think that is because most instructors have not been taught the sub those sub is very 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 good like pressure yeah. how pressure moves and so on what the fan does and when they try to explain it they don't know enough about it so when they explain it to students it becomes co complicated yeah. like it like it, it really is true like Einstein said to explain something you, simple you have to be really really good at it you need to be a fire instructor you need to be you need to know the fire so there's a story well you need to know what you're teaching the fire phenomena whatever yeah. you're teaching but you need to also to have some uh teaching skills as well and and for the longest time a fire instructor was something someone who was either really good on their job or really knew his stuff very well, but actually was lacking some of the other two pieces. Well, it's, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. the Swedish fire should still is the case. Yeah, yeah, so, um, and this is why probably the way uh, fire attack is being te taught in, 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 in fire training sometimes has this, mm, malfunctioning, I would say, in the whole system. But I would say that the tendency or where we need to, to get, I'm just not saying right now, different problems in different countries, it's gonna be very different from one fire department to a different fire department, different firefighters. Well, where we need to go is to a system where we actually, we make people understand why is happening, what is happening. And, um, and this is rather than getting into the pushing fire and I'd rather have someone, you know, uh, would you not just, just not use the word then? I wouldn't talk, use it. You wouldn't use it? I wouldn't use it. I would just, just I talk, talk no. about convection. Would you, would you have to talk about convection flow path? Changing flow yeah. path, changing yeah. direction. Yeah, I would rather go, I I'd rather go into that pushing fire so vague. I mean, push. Yeah, push. I agree. I mean, and, and but well, it, it push doesn't that, mean. I mean, push doesn't mean that you move. I'm pushing you. No, it just means that you yeah. have a you yeah, have, yeah. A, you so have it, a force on you. But yeah, yeah. But would it be different? Like if you were in the American fire service, because in Europe generally, I mean, pushing fire was a non-existent word before. Yeah. Before like UL and America. Vista. Yeah. If you were in the American fire service, would you? I mean, it's like a, can you avoid using the word? I would try. I would try. I think we. I mean, generations. 
younger re generation right now is globalized, completely globalized, and all those motivated firefighters that would go and jump in the internet. So it's basically the gap between cultural gap is is getting uh, smaller and smaller. So I would say that they they can do. They should go the same way. I would just uh, very recently today I was I was discussing with with this. Uh, North American fire officers saying that most of their new recruits they have college degree. Yeah. This is the vast majority. The, so so we someone who with a college degree. I mean how they how can be, we yeah. how can no it's not that they should some someone without a college degree is able to understand as well. But how can we uh, think that? A recipe system, just yeah. a recipe. Don't think, just do it like that. It's going to work out with someone with such a high education. It's the ability that for the until it was twenty two, twenty three. It's been in a, in a, in an educational system trying to get them to understand why things are done. Yeah, and, and I and I totally agree with you. And, yeah. and again, especially especially for full time personnel where there is more time on the job later on, because if you teach people. A recipe way of doing things and you don't show people there's a depth to that that there is a much there's a lot of nuance that they also make it the false impression not just that this it's is an easy. oversimplified model yes but it also like that there's no depth so why why would I ever try to study more why would I yeah so do people get bored like they a lot of a lot of people get bored because they think that like well I, I know this so why should I keep on doing anything if yep. you, if you don't if you show the log like I, I I absolutely say that at some level you have to write a recipe if you, you because you can't say like well energy doesn't really exist because it's just a theory I mean there you have to you have at some some point you have to make a simplification and to say uh, that that's that is true but uh, but so I you, mean, all, you always have to choose where you simplify yeah but right now I would say it's too early oh yeah absolutely yeah, I it's agree. too early we, we start oversimplifying things too too early and trying to make a recipe and 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 um, trying we even have a hard time trying to find the wise I will I will I would challenge some of the fire instructors to to with some questions actually whether they understand why they're teaching those recipes because in that I mean if they're just repeating the recipe they have and they don't even understand why that is being done the principle behind that recipe we're just I mean that's a total fail and I know it's happening oh yeah I mean yeah, yeah. I would say like when I started when I started doing like well typically that you start having like running a training session for your shift on the, on the yeah. fire station on thing. what did you do well you picked up an old PowerPoint or in PDF or whatever and you basically read what it said in the PowerPoint and that PowerPoint was probably built by someone hopefully <laughs> but probably built by someone who just put some of the information on the PowerPoint and talked about a lot of stuff to that PowerPoint yeah. But but the next one like just read the PowerPoint and after a while that information is like nobody knows uh, absolutely uh, what I, the PowerPoint was meant to say. I well you know that I I, I I I've always been keen on putting all my presentations free for free in the internet. Yeah. So there I share everything in the internet. You go and find it, Google it, and you'll download it. So I've happened to to attend classes of someone using my presentation yeah or at least bits of it yeah and and they were using bits of my presentation fairly good chunks of it yeah. someone never attended a course that i that and then that i that i delivered saying you see how the message gets twisted yeah. sometimes and this is something i say well i I won't say it's good that everything was was in the internet, but then and now it's a free interpretation, and this is not what I was meant to explain over no. here. And this is, yeah. So so, bottom line for me, I I think we are facing a new generation. The fire service has changed a lot. We say the fire has changed, the, but we also have changed a lot the profile of the recruits. And I don't think the same teaching methods will help anymore. On top of that, I I look back when I was in high school or when I was in school, thirty 
years plus and ago and i see that what my daughter is doing right now i say well things have changed as well they've evolved and the generation is not used to the same training same uh, educational methods and um, teaching methods and uh, that's uh, where i think we need to get better in terms of, of training so push fire i don't like the word i'd rather explain no. I'd rather explain it can happen in some situations, that's for sure. I, but yet again, we could discuss for the long, longest time about what uh, pushing fire is. I'd rather start talking about flow path, about convention, yeah. about plume, about elements that they can relate to and which you can find in any book, in any, in any, any good book. book. Yeah, in a real book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, people don't read anymore. Almost. They do diagonal reading. <laughs> which what's, is, what's, what's diagonal reading? Diagonal reading is I read one word here, one word at the very end of a paragraph, then <laughs> like that, and then I try. I don't have enough time to read it all, so I figured out in the middle what the words were. <laughs> so, and that you're biased in that interpretation, but <laughs> of course, yeah. you go like. Yeah, if you, like speed reading, you you make you make up what's in you yeah. make up what's in between the the words and uh, there is a lot of speed reading. There is, but that's not that's not the norm. That's just you or other ones who are good at reading. No, well, would you say that? Would you say that your average firefighter is a speed reader? No, I would say they we are less and less used to read. That we have, uh, yeah, it's got to be, it's right got to be graphical. It's got to be. I think yeah, the that's, best that's method right now it's, it's to be graphical. It's to be. I like a lot commented videos. Yeah. Okay, with where you got real images mixed with commands and yeah. and arrows here and there. I think that is extremely. That's very graphical. The far service has got something. It's very. People are very intuitive and very visual so the way well, you I learn, think it's just the fire service i think they're just people yeah but you see in some other domains uh, in which i've been lately been working a lot on uh, research domain and you yeah, see that they're not typical yeah you see that people you're are at cern <laughs> you're yeah not, certain people you're, you're not with normal people <laughs> well I don't know that. <laughs> we could discuss about what the word normal means. But, uh, but you see that they, they face reading in a different way. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, that they actually, and it's not the way, because part of being a research and in the research is, is about reading and reading in a very attentive way and being paying a lot of attention. This is something probably that degree of tension when we read is not something that you will find in the fire service. So this is why uh, I guess the best that I've, or what I've found the best in trying to convey messages, pieces and bits of information into the fire service uh, was those videos. Well, I agree. And, and, and but it's just, and it's, it's funny because the, I've, I've thought about this again. If I go back to the going to Swedish fire service, like most of the video content I know that's used on the fire stations are, are produced like 15, 20 years ago. Of course. And they're still running out there. Yeah. And I don't understand because to, uh, to produce video has, has, you know, I mean, everyone with a cam with the camera go, go like, boom, I shoot yeah. a video and just. 10 seconds it's up on a computer but even though it's become so easy to use video there's there's so few firefighters so because fire we don't want to the videos i mean two two things two thoughts on videos on one way one of the powerful things about videos is you can share you and me we would watch a video together and we can comment yeah. and that's harder to do when it's a text number two i said is that right now we get a lot of videos but they're very um I would say there is it is something that happens all of a sudden and I start my my I start my my iPhone and, and start uh, getting it well, yeah, well, it's, yeah, yeah but, it's, but it's not something that was meant that probably those videos from the 90s uh, are training in Sweden I mean they 
they actually wanted to they they knew what they wanted to show oh yeah there yeah. they, they was a plan there they were a plan about. and probably there was like this video script you can see for the movies where you have like mm -hmm. little drawings cartoons and and well you will do this and yeah. this and this this will but last well, again, for but why, why isn't that happening today more again the technical process is so much easier which is so we think we think a video anyone can do a video so nobody and, does it and it's or like taking it's just, a photo i mean everybody can push the button in a in a in a in a photo camera and you push your telephone and you take a photo well a photo a real photo takes a lot more than that I and mean, it's you, also you need to know what it yeah you need to know out. what you want to show how you want to show that that so a video is even more more complex for me a, a video is something which is uh, you need to know what is going to, what you want to explain if it's something that is foreseen that is planned if it's a real video from a real intervention then that's something else but on a video that you you actually you actually do on purpose you need to know what you want to show and I, and I agree and I think that if I would say like I think that the one of the reasons why we don't shoot video anymore uh, well, we do, but uh, not in the same way as I would say back in 15, 20 years ago. It's because um, it's one part fear. Because whenever I shoot a video, uh, the people in it become very feared about being exposed themselves to doing something wrong. So it, ha yeah. it has to be judgment. very yeah. judgment. Like, like yeah. they know, like it's going to end up on YouTube or something, and they will be judged and. People don't like yeah. to judge and so on. So it's a lot, it's yeah. there's a fear of doing that. Yeah, and it's that's true. And it's also and it's also hard because I just met an example. I'm just doing we're doing like instructional videos for interior interior attack. So yeah. I've been just doing it in like a house and there was no smoke and everything and the fire was moving around. They were doing different things, dragging hose line, working with the tick and spraying water and so yeah. on. And I did all the videos, like a day shooting, and went home and edited it. And I, and I couldn't use one single shot of the, that video because I all, in every one of those, I found like errors that were, that was at least highly annoying, if not wrong. Because there's so many, there's so many subtleties. Like if you do a raise a ladder, like to do it perfectly. How like many the, takes does it take really to, I mean, any any scene in a movie how many takes does it oh, take it's to, super to, scripted it's super yeah, and you yeah. have to do it like five times to get yeah, it right or, yeah to get it right so why so you're trying to choose something to do something and to show something in that video i mean you might as well you're gonna have to repeat it several times yeah and, and, I, have not, to, and I think that's just hard because i i know like when i watch video i try to keep that in mind saying that it's really hard to do something like perfectly but you yeah. still want perfectly because first off you don't want to be criticized. But the second one is usually when you want to do a video, you want like an instructor video. You want to show this is what good looks like. Yeah. This is perfect. So, you don't want to show a video like this is sort of okay. Just ignore the things they're doing here because that was that was that was an error. Uh, yeah. And that makes like the, the whole process of making something look perfect. Like if you could only do the instructor video, probably about, it's good to make a cold run without the camera and get the crew because otherwise the crew is very likely to to it's going to think that they'll be judged that they are supposed to to get get it right the first shot and a hundred percent and yeah so video for me it is is what it works i mean i and i remember some uh probably 10 15 years ago in the far service so, and something that struck me like that, and there's these guys that were discussing the fire station after dinner, and they needed to change something, they were passionate by bicycles and stuff, and they wanted to change something, there was something they wanted to do in, in the bike. So, and then they go into YouTube, and then they, they find out the video, and they look, and they go and see how the guy is doing that, and how instead of going and referring to the manual, I mean, they were going into a video someone posted somewhere. Yeah. And then at some point they say, this is where we're getting. I mean, that was probably the very early ages of YouTube, you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So this is where we're getting, we are getting it wrong. We're still trying to put that everything you need to do in manuals. And we haven't understood that uh, 
society has changed, the media has changed, everything has changed. And right now, when you want to know how you do something, you go into YouTube. In, into YouTube. But I mean, and so, sorry, it's not, first of all, it's not just that it's like more engaging, but I mean, to write down all the details about how to move your body, how to drag the hose, how to hold your hose, how to move your tick, like if you know what I mean. Yeah. It, it would be like a thousand page report then to make a 10, 10 minute video. In the video you go back 10 seconds and then, oh, he did it like oh, that. Like, oh, he put his hand like yeah, this and he did this and this and this. So, I mean, it, some it, things you can't, you can't, well, like, well you, almost you can't do it. Well, do you, we, we need to move on then. The same way I was, I was telling you that we need to understand or we need to explain why we, 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 we do things and they need to, to understand what's going on in the background. I think the way of um, teaching some maneuvers, some basic moves yeah. and some some techniques it is has to switch entirely to video oh i, I agree too yeah, i mean yeah there's it's, no it's, it's just not unless, unless you want to stand there and do it like physically with all the instructions but but i don't have time to yeah, but then it, it's non-consistent yeah okay. well it, yeah, unless yeah, you have yeah. the same person every time but yeah but you can't afford that no in, no, in, no. In, a, in a forest service yeah and so you, you want the same people educating so 500 you, yeah people. you want to make sure that everybody does one thing the way it's been decided to do it yeah you because need to like this is the norm the, this, this is the is norm the, when the norm is, is is not out of the blue is something that has been discussed in a committee where we had uh people who were not fully in that uh particular domain yeah. the the fire officers the the union and everything and at some point <laughs> oh this is the way we're going okay we're yeah. going that way and rather than usually what we do is we we train one instructor and then and that replicates into another 10 instructors and then that gets replicated into different yeah, shapes, and different. it distorts distorts, yeah, it's, distorts. A, it's a yeah and, and the message starts uh getting twisted yeah. over time you rather i'll play the video and then we we go and then someone's a little bit more has a little bit of not more knowledge in that particular domain and in in area and can explain a little bit of the bits of it but um yeah that that is one of the challenges that we have well we ended up on we started pushing fire pushing we, fire video <laughs> into video um uh, no that's good um so i want to i want to talk about i want to talk about um um I want to talk about no uh, nozzles and streams also. That's one of the topics that right. I still still find very interesting. So I mean, uh, going back, like I, I, I you know, I've, I've probably been as you schooled into a system where 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 fog or or uh, keep the the nozzle in a fog stream pretty much all the time. Whether we're running on, it's like the norm because that's how you teach. Yeah, that was the standard. That was the way I was taught. Yeah, look like that was yeah. like a straight stream was like the most inefficient way of spreading water. So you yeah. never use a straight stream unless you're like yeah. going to shoot or something we that you don't didn't reach. Yeah, we were schooled into yeah fog nozzles and and cones and pulsing and, yeah. and my generation is probably a generation of firefighters who went into the fire and even though the fire was wide open and you could just flow as much water as you wanted and you would see the you would see us and then start pulsing what's the point of pulsing over here when you're out already <laughs> out of the room there's nothing so uh, but there's there's like there's both misinformation there's both misconception but it's we also, didn't understand what we were doing that no i don't I, and i yeah. think most people most instructors didn't do in for that matter in, in sweden also they just replicated what other instructors did and 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 it's but it's also about other things about like a romanticization of how easy it is in a fire compartment to do those things like like yeah. you you have this is like a typical instructor you have an instructor developing something like an idea um i'm not saying this is case like master sander geese never went yeah. into a container in their life like master sander when yeah. they did like nozzle with, with gas cooling uh but but what but what it happened afterwards is like you you, perf you perfect something in a training setting like yeah. become really good at it like yeah. short pulsing you know 
the fuel load, you have good visibility, you know what the, what the smoke layer is going to do. You develop pulsing to the point where you can go inside the container, yeah. cool your way all the way down, just use a little bit of water, take the water, no water on the floor, you go like, this is perfect. And you pretend someone 2 a.m. a day in... Zero visibility. Yeah, zero visibility, eighth floor. You, uh, don't, you know, don't know what's uh, going on. How, you don't know the component. You want uh, things to happen the same way. Um, and, and, and an open floor plan with, yeah. with 10 meters distance. But even a room, let's say you would find a room the size of one of those ship containers we use for training. And then are you actually, I mean, you see fire already rolling all over to half, almost one half of the of the container. Gee, are you actually going to go in at that point? Are you going, I mean, probably you want to hit it you right want, now. Yeah. You want to hit it from, from that door. Yeah, yeah Before you go, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to approach to two meters off a seat of a fire or two. And this is, well, the transfer knowledge was, was simply, we didn't get it. No, 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 again, again it goes back it. to like the, uh, to me, like the romanticized view of, well, look how easy this is, like in a training yeah. setting, and it just took it out to the fire ground and said, "Well, this is super easy." Now, I, I don't, of course, the, the, like the like the science is is very clear on small droplets that it's yeah. more efficient absorbing water yeah. and then all those things about gas laying and proving. The the problem is 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 like how valid is it in practice? That's that's the question. It's not about if it's true scientifically. I know it's, that. It's the question is how valid are techniques in practical settings? And one one simple simple practical problem is just is just reach. Like if yeah. you if you if you have a ship if you have a small apartment, typical old Swedish apartment with small rooms, yeah. small rooms boxed in, pulse uh, you know fog with with shorter pulses or even like two to three second pulses, longer yeah. ones work perfectly. And I mean, you, 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 you deal with every room and then you move to the next doorway, you deal with that room, move yeah. to the next doorway and they fire and you put some yeah, water on fire. Yeah. Super easy. I think for me, the, the biggest realization was when I started, when I started having bigger, bigger volumes and, and not having ever been exposed to like during my training, we never, ever went to, into a larger volume than, than uh, like a dual container, like a yeah. dual width. That was the largest volume we ever went into. And we didn't even do like nozzle practicing in a good way in that one. That was like a long fog stream. And you can cover like that kind of volume, you can you can pretty much cover with a fog. Yeah. Like with the, yeah. With the penalties, okay. we, have, yeah. we have mixing, we have air entrainment, but that's just the same air going around, so I don't really care besides the mixing. But then we have like the really next step, which we, never talked about like in my career we never have the training session on it we never talked about it there wasn't a manual for it there wasn't anything where you go like at a store like if you yeah. go to like a small even a small store yeah. like what do you do and that's where i the first thing i realized that when i went to america like these people when I, when I realized, when I could get over my biases and saying that, well, you just kill everyone in your fires, so it doesn't work. Like, well, they don't kill that many firefighters in the United no. States. They're just big. And if obviously it works, and maybe not, if, we can talk efficiency so on. But when we talk about, we, we're going large volumes doing a fog stream, like reach five meters, seven meters maybe of effectiveness. But like, like, the yeah, we're stream. not scaling the problem. No, not yet. at all. And it, uh, I mean, the straight stream, and but because I you know why? Because we don't, we didn't understand what we were doing. No, 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 we we weren't understanding. And this is tell you how it went. One of the first times I went into uh, uh, training train session, I think it was during my uh, my first year, and then I remember this uh, training session. We were in a flashover container, and then. Oh, so what are you supposed to do? No, it's simple. It was a, a tank container, so we were supposed to go all the way from the entrance to the to 
uh, uh, we were supposed to approach the seat of a fire and then and then make our way in and then going back. So and then I remember, no, the way to do it is you go in, you need all the way from the door to the seat of the fire, you need to produce six short pulses, you advance, you need to do another six short pulses, you advance, and yeah, I mean, we're, it's robotic firefighting. We were not understanding at all what we were doing at with that. We saw, we were just sewing, we saw the fire instructor come, going in through that container, making sort of a demo, and we say one, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. and then, Two, two steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we just replicated the whole yeah. thing. So if we don't understand what we're doing, then we go, we transfer that knowledge into a small house apartment and fairly works. Then we go into a warehouse or a store, or whatever, a supermarket, double high uh, ceiling, uh, large, and, and we try to scale and it doesn't work. Because we are not, we don't know what we're doing at that point. If we were taught, well, when you do that, we you need to reach where the water has to be put. Yeah. Yeah, and then you probably say, well, this five meter fog pattern is not going to be enough. Yeah. But I was never learned. Like, what do you do then? No. Like there was no there was no like even because even, there was no even, problem. Even, for even, that. Yeah. No, it was not like not like well we'll train you to do a small fire and you'll figure out to do a large fire yourself. Yeah, that's true. That was true. But we were not saying, well, try right now you're trying to cool those gases over there. Now you're putting water on the surfaces and doing that. Now you're trying to to stop that engine on the fire. You were not uh doing that. It was a very nice exercise that I did very recently with this uh, friend of mine, Stefan Morisot. It's uh, an exercise he's developed called Tableau de Vaud, which would be the translation, be like a dashboard. Mm -hmm. So basically the exercise is, well, you got the container and the student is supposed to be able to control the container and try to maintain conditions for the longest time possible. Okay, what does it take? And you can take, you can, you can control the, the door in the back, the hatch, you can control the side door, you can put water on the gases, you can put on the side walls, on the engine, everything. And basically that, and he'll tell you, well, I need to steal energy from the engine of the fire by doing this. It's got too much power right now. And actually, before you did the action, you're supposed to explain what you want to do. Yeah. So that so you're going, don't do anything before no, explaining it. Yeah. So there's no robotics right yeah. there. So say so actually you need to 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 go through a thinking process. And the, that kind of exercise will probably, if you go like that in that container, you could scale it up afterwards because while well, the fire is going to be bigger the situation is going to be bigger when you say well i want to cool those gases i want to reach the fuel i want to do that and probably then the stream pattern whether you're in an apartment or whether you're in a large warehouse is going to be different and your flow rate is going to be different probably and this yeah is, i mean it's, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah, because point. you understand yeah. why you're doing that so big props, we we're never taught that. We were never taught how to scale the training that we were doing into that. And we still have problems in doing that. Oh, this yeah, we, we, we still, I, I would, I, this is what Yeah, I pretty much I can confidently say that most Swedish firefighters don't still train uh, in large volumes. And in in large, it. yeah. So um, there's still, still, well, at least not in an effective way. So, uh, so this is why that exercise was for me revealing in that, in that way. I say, well, I interesting to see how you can use different tools. Well, I think there's so there's a lot of that going on in this region first. I think I think we that we've been we've become very much better understanding the why, but it still goes down. I I I'm constantly reminded of the, the lack of you you. I would say the why like that, an exercise where you play like that, I really like it. Uh, when you really under, start to understand it, what happens if I place the water on the boards compared to on the fire, yeah. what happens if I place it with small droplets in, this, in, the, in, the, yeah. in the gases compared to large droplets and so on. So that is, I think it's critical. But it's still, you have to, after that, you have to take them out to, if not a real big box for that matter, 
to simulate it somehow, like show videos with it. So you like synthesize that experience yep. of showing. Now the, you would have, the, it would look something like this. So for instance, like using straight streams, painting the ceiling and basically cool. cooling down the, the gases in the ceiling with that splash of water and also creating a sprinkler that rains down through the smoke, but also to, yep. to whatever's burning further ahead of you. And if they haven't seen that technique being used, I, I, I would never ever have used it because I thought like I, I was taught, I was, it was implied that straight streams, besides like reach, if you see something further ahead, you want to get wet, it was useless. Like putting the straight stream to the ceiling was like, that was like, you don't do that. Yeah. I. But because it was, it was taught that it, it's just going to flush the ceiling and it's, the, the, the droplets going to be created are way too large to cool gases, yeah. which they're not because you can see it over and over again in, in videos. I don't have quantifiable data. There's some of it in the fire detect study that you can see on, on, on the quantify, sort of quantify it. But you can see gas contraction. You can see you can see that it works. Yeah. You can see stopping flame and progression. You can see it on tons yeah, of yeah, videos in the American. Like you paint the ceiling, the, the flames go away. And I was taught that that doesn't work. Yeah. To probably two thoughts on 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 this you saying about big volumes. I mean, probably it's a higher risk environment. Oh, Usually, absolutely. yeah, going. Um, happening also in a structure, at least in Europe, which is usually um, have a less a structural stability to fire. That, all, they're almost disposable. It, they're, yeah. they're almost so, built like so if people have the time to get out, that's it's all some, that requires. It's a more rare event. It's a more rare yeah, event. Absolutely. More risk. So basically you need to train more for that. Because or, or if say that, that we're not designed for that so we'll yeah you can well but that that is a hard call as well yeah and so but that's, yeah. that's sometimes yeah. like like what you yeah that you're like fire chief like this is what you're supposed to do if you have this situation like yeah call, but I, call yeah, a friend <laughs> yeah hi okay situations even with that have a rare probability but very high consequences yeah. important consequence i think we need to train a lot for those and or not it, at all or not at all, but you need to I, be able to identify that you're not going to yeah, take Yeah, you get to identify and then like yeah. surround and drown okay, so, or whatever. So if you if you were, if, if, you're, I, if you if you if you identify and and you say I'm not going to do anything, that's okay. But oh, uh, I don't think I don't really think it's okay. But I just see that's reality yeah. sometimes. Yeah, that some some people just don't think that you should be trained for for a lot of situations because they don't deem it be cost efficient. Like, yeah. they, they could be, that's because I, I'm not blaming the fire chiefs here, but the fire chief maybe goes like, there's no life at stake here. It's a big building. They're insured. There's no value here for the yeah. taxpayer. Why should we risk firefighters' lives? Well, some, sometimes there's a problem in fire extinction. Oh, yeah, 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 there might, might be there different is, reasons. Uh, I'm just saying that that's It's sad to of, say, but sometimes they there is this, well, uh, Fire chief wants us to do something because otherwise it's going to have, be hard to explain everyone why we didn't. Oh, like, absolutely! Yeah. You said that's so, many, so many. I don't want to. I don't want to. Like, yeah. Really so uh, I want to. I want to get in there. So not. so it's a nice scenario. Yeah, we need to be able to identify, then train, and and it's hard to find a a proper prop for that. Yeah, it might be well I mean it's well, more challenging well, than well, the, the real I mean the C can that we're used to. Oh no, I mean I, that's something you get for a couple couple thousand. Well you could build you? like there's like you could build like the four boxes and then like some people have and there's Yeah, but it takes also. a little bit more. It takes a little bit more and it's still a small compartment. Like yeah. we're, when we're talking a warehouse, you can't yeah. build something like that. So, so what we had, the government wire region, we just had to commandeer or commandeer find yeah. some uh, uh, old building or a new one we could borrow where yeah. we could either spray water or maybe not spray water but then you have to, like you can do something like yeah like you fill it with smoke and, and train s tactical maneuvers and changing of personnel and and how to advance and, and retreat if and so I, on if I, if I go back as well to this problem you you used uh, 
these large volumes. I think sometimes we're focusing as well, we're focusing in techniques and don't get me wrong, I think that's important, but I think the most, the thing that has the most, the most weight into, in the outcome of these operations is actual the tactical choices that are being made by the incident commander at that point. Is well, he, I wouldn't say that they're, I would say that they're equally important as the techniques because no, but whether, you can set the best tactic in the world. If the firefighters don't perform, you're going to fail. Anyway. Yeah, but you're going to see it where you, you, you're just put, going to engage people for and set them for failure because oh, the, yeah, scenario, the scenario is a no-go anyway. I mean, there's no way with the resources that you have and the things that you, you know the guys can do that that a scenario is going to be able to be dealt with. So tactical choices, yeah, but where, where I see most of our problems, or when I've seen problems in this kind of large volume scenarios, I think it's been tactical choices I would say from both. the incident, I would say both incident because, commander. I mean, yeah. That's my, well, that's my side of the law. But if you said tactical choices, they go like, oh, well, I think I can handle that one. That might be right, this analysis, but the firefighters going to, they're going to come out after 20 minutes and the building's going to burn down. Yeah. And that's, that, I guess, yeah. that's, I've, I've seen as many examples of that as tactical problems where people go like, yeah, yeah. we'll take on, on that one, it's a loss. Yeah. Like well, there's no reason whatsoever. There's no be... way, yeah, there's some tactical choices that you'll never be able to overcome no matter what t your technique yeah, is absolutely. or how so good it is. Say, I think that the, you, I can't really say that one is more important, but I agree with that. Yeah. I would say that far chief, far, 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 incident uh, commander has to be aware at least of what are the limitations of the crews. Oh yeah, right. absolutely. I mean, yeah. no, no, no. sometimes you, you got people which are not trained for that or, oh, yeah. or whatever, or their skills in, in a particular, for a particular type of intervention are limited to yeah. some extent. You say, well, rock rescue is one, a good example. Rock rescue you can have, usually you have a uh, standard level for just about everyone in the, in, yeah. in, in, in the fire service. And then you got people actually are exceeding that domain and see, well, you need to know very well that day what kind of crew you have. And there are some operations you can engage and some others you better but not. But you can't really do that in fire culturally. Because it's been a, at least it's been a problem, I would assume in this, saying like, well, yeah. Pedro, you are not really good at fire, so we'll, well not go in that this can, time. That can add a flavor in the choices that you do. Well, uh, yes. I, yeah, I would the, have, same I, way, the same way you go for an incident, well, how many... How many engines do I have today with me? How many well, like, yes, people? Well, yes, and I think that good, good crew commanders, especially crew commanders, captains or whatever, like they know their crew and they will make those choices for them without actually saying they may be. No, they, it's they probably make, something intuitive. Something yeah, yeah I mean, a lot of time it is. They go like, yeah, yeah I don't think we it. can handle that, but a different day with a different crew, you, you think you can handle it. Yeah, but it still is like if you if I go to uh, uh, on a water rescue call, like like on a rope rescue in Sweden, there's no problem whatsoever to just say like, well, uh, you're a better swimmer, so you'll take the swimming gear. You're the one to support that one. No one would have a problem with that. There's no no whatsoever yeah, because that's they, they, in a fire you wouldn't be able to do that. No, in a fire yeah. you will like yeah. no. I don't think you no, <laughs> you'll do the pump here. We'll because have the two kind of in 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 the nozzle. Yeah, that's true. So, so there is, there is a, but you can do it intuitively, you can do it without saying, but it's still this cultural thing that fire, fire when it comes to command and, and we, firefighters, everybody's equal. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree. And when that is a problem, of course, because that's we're it. all... With, yeah, it, and it's not true. It's not not true. everybody has the same skills. That especially I, when it comes to yeah. officers. I would say especially yeah. when it comes to officers. Yeah, that's I, uh, I, I, um, I, 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 I'm really good at making plans. I'm less good at actually executing plans, for Putting instance. Putting them into practice, yeah. Because that takes different skills, like communication and, and so, so on. Yeah. But meanwhile, oh, yeah. I, have, I, have, I had colleagues that were much better at executing plans, but they were not really good at tactically making a plan because they were not yeah. good at anal analyzing situation and, the and, situation and, and deeming a, like what would be appropriate measure yeah, here. So like, having like, a collection of different possibilities for a single for a same scenario that's yeah. true as well yeah that is yeah again when i was taught it was taught that when you bounce it off the ceiling it's just going to flush over the ceiling the droplets are going to come down they're not small enough to effectively cool gases 
And when I like, like, again, I haven't quantified this, but like when I've done backyard signs, like in an LPG yeah. container, where you have liquid LPG yeah. coming out and it's just whoosh box all over yeah. you. And I'll, there's I'll, actually a, a cooling effect, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. and, but, and I yeah. try to like, like backyard science quantify it. Like uh, when I, I guess we're too strict on the way when we say, uh, there's no effect, there's full effect. And then I guess at some point you say, well, the droplets are too big for having a uh, gas cooling effect. Well, the droplets are too big to have the, to be most, efficient. the most efficient gas cooling, but certainly there's a gas cooling effect. Yes, and I, I, mean, point, I, mean, I, I yeah. think it's like when I, when I did it, no, no, yeah. when I finished that one, when I did it, and I've done multiple, multiple times in, contain, in, in that kind of, because I think that container can actually be very good at doing that. It's about, it's about half. You need, like, if you, if you do sweeps with a fog at 150 liters per, 115 liters per minute, like if you do fogs, you can protect, you're like, but you put, you, you can hold the flames away from you. Yeah. Not rushing over you with 115 if you move them to side to side. If you do straight stream and whip it in ceiling, doesn't matter what pattern you have and so on. But if you go to 230, you have the same effect. Yeah. Uh, like, and so it's so, a, so like, and that was like, I've never been I've taught that that doesn't work at all, but it's like, I mean, you go like, and then you, and, and, and the then problem you, is that at all. Yeah. There's a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. But then you go to the next thing, like, well, what if you go to the big box now your short cone, doesn't even get anywhere close to where it needs to go to cool. So you're basically 0% efi efficient while yep. the straight stream goes and see, even though it's, it's technically less efficient. Now you're at least being effective or possibly being effective. Like, so it's, it's situation dependent in terms of what are you trying to accomplish or in, in which yep. situ situation. Yep. And that was not part of the puzzle. And this in the same goes with Americans. Like when, when, when I read case studies at like, there's many I've read that I, I, I would identify this as a problem, but one I comes to mind and the easy ones was there was firefighters coming into a small, uh, like a small kitchen in a single residential house and there was a fire in the attic and they came in and they pulled ceiling. Yeah. So they basically pulled the fire down on top of them. Uh, yeah, you should pull ceiling, but that's a different, different topic. Uh, but you pulled ceiling the basically pulled this, the, the fire down to them, started to get really hot. Uh, the zero this visibility went from like good visibility to zero. And there was a communication problem and they lose contact with each other. So the firefighter with the host line couldn't leave because he was afraid his partner was inside there. And it was getting hotter and hotter. So he started flowing water. Uh, and it was just flowing water and it was getting hotter and hotter and hotter. It's just flowing water like a, well, it's, yeah ancient three-quarter line it's a lot of water for a small kitchen and, and like in a residential house it's not a flow problem it's not a like the fire is huge it's just that what he's doing like he's, he can see it start burning in, in like you see glow and so on he sees it burn but he's just whipping a stream around up in the yeah. ceiling that's it like he's being taught but nothing happens and he he burns his hand and eventually they find each other and they go out and he burns his hand like he couldn't hold the, the nozzle because it was so hot it burns his yeah. hand and melted equipment God. and so on so it, it was, I mean, it was, it was, it was yeah, hot. Was a club. And, and, and the thing is, I mean, club. to me, it's pretty obvious. Like the stream doesn't do anything when it goes through the smoke. It's just when it hits the surface, yeah. it breaks up the droplets. That's where it cools. And he was shooting water up in the attic through the holes that they pulled down. So there was no cooling effect actually down in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the in kitchen. Yeah. So there's like, there's like an equal, like the, the you can't just go around monkey monkey throwing water with a straight stream and think that you're going to solve all the problem. And you can't monkey around with a fog stream just doing six pulses and advancing yeah. two steps. Basically, you need to understand, <laughs> okay, I need to make droplets. And where? Okay, like where? Where I need to make them. There are some ways which is this is more effective and there's ways which is less effective. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the guy is just putting water through the attic, as you said, but it's never hitting. Uh, uh, the he was probably being, cooling gases up yeah, in the attic. Yeah, all the way off, awesome. off, off the uh, seat of the fire where they were, uh, of the room of origin where they were. So um, then it came for me, this is a misunderstanding in the conditions and what we are trying to do.
Yeah, but and uh, going back to like, of course, it's like asking, like, Danny you, Pine, yeah. like, like teaching people why I want to achieve and so on. But again, going back to Swedish fire service, never taught. And then they, like now, when I taught teach in Sweden, go like, I, like, like, how do you bounce water around corners? Like, you, I was, that's not part of the agenda. Like, if you're in a hallway and it's burning. Just, if it's yeah. burning out in the in, in the in the in the in the court or not, the yeah. door is open. Like you can actually like if you hit it with a straight stream at a yeah. right angle, you can bounce droplets out in the hallway and yeah. cool ahead of you and so on. And with a tick, you can actually see that. Yeah. Like you can you have to direct your stream and do that. And yeah. when you when you get out there, you can do a fog to cool close to you, and you can do a straight stream to cool far ahead of you. Yeah. But it was it's the what I what I and, and it's it's what I'm. One thing that gets me frustrated is that I'm part of a I'm part of a uh, European community that prouds themselves to being scientifically oriented and, oh, and open minded and, and unbiased and go like we're sitting in the biggest bubble also just we are. just because be, just because Europe in general and, and Sweden being part of that started the scientific journey earlier. So we've been basing more of our tactics on science. I would be compared to the yeah. Americans, like and, like and, being and, limited of, of ventilation and so on. That doesn't mean that we were we get got it all right at the start, and that's just being like arrogant. We are extremely biased by our own opinions. No, absolutely. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this is something I've always criticized in the European Fire Service. <clears throat> I can do that because I come from the European Fire Service, and yeah. I think the, uh, we've been doing a very poor job in trying to identify what went wrong. And I think most of the efforts, as soon as we had problems, and we've d identified several problems, uh, uh, case studies, uh, line of duty deaths, or uh, uh, close, close calls, and, 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 and near falls, and, and, and in all those situations, uh, you realize that the efforts and of the fires from the side of the fire service, whether officially or from the members of the fire service, was rather to justify or trying to 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 find. Well, he didn't do it actually right like that, but not actually put in the whole system. The into, theory was correct. What we taught them was correct. They did, yeah, they, they did it wrong. Did, did, yeah. They did it wrong. Yeah. They did it wrong. They didn't apply the, the the method. It was not actually trying to step out and say, well. These, we've had 10 reports over the last five years actually pointing out the same thing in different countries in Europe. Oh, yeah. Might as well, though. We may have a problem in the way we teach uh, fire extinction, fire suppression in those containers because yeah, the guys yeah, are, absolutely. The guys are I mean, full flashover conditions and they're, the guys are trying to pull to add. Yeah, and I think it is low flow rate. Yeah. So and, and it's still a problem. I, you know, not maybe to the extent it was five years ago. I hope, but it's still a problem. It it, it is a problem. It is a problem. So that is that is true. And also, yeah. I mean, and taking into account that also the the, the whole air and training thing is most of the time it's so it's so overrated and so on but it, but it's still it, that was an aspect that we didn't teach our firefighters about like inside compartment like if you're if you're inside a room like in the big room they would you sure you get mixing if you start flowing in like a fog you would get mixing that no. to me it doesn't really matter that much because you're just mixing the environment in there and 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 usually you got smoke to the ground it's hot and everything it's it doesn't you're just yeah. making it more un, non, uh, uncombustible. It doesn't really matter that much. But but there are occasions where it will really matter. Like if you're going transition from one compartment to the next, that's basic. That's a doorway, and it's no difference towards understanding on the outside. You're pressurizing that room if you're doing a fog through that that, that doorway. If you're inside a house, like it's yeah. it's the same thing. So if you don't want to pressurize that room, if you don't want to if you don't want to get that convective heat being transferred somewhere else somewhere or taken else, out. Yeah. So that you also go like, but that was, that was never part of any plan to say that, well, no. maybe in certain cases, if I have on like, if, if there is a bent point on the other side, you want to have that because you want to push everything in front of you. That, okay, that was not part of the equation. Uh -huh. ne neither was it if I don't have an opposite vent point that if I do a do a fog, for instance, in a doorway, I am going to pressurize the other compartment. Then probably that probably not enough peer review in the way we're training people. 
I mean, that yeah. was something. Well, I, I mean, think the, the, the fi- peer review was enough because all the peers thought basically that was non-issue. Well, that, was, that was part well, of Well, if your peer is your colleague that thinks the same, that's not a peer review. Well, no, well, yeah, yeah well, her review is something. But you could, you could, but for that pattern, you could have taken pretty much anyone from Europe that, and they wouldn't recognize that as a problem. Yeah, but someone outside the far service as well. We yeah, had, that would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be, yeah, yeah, yeah the problem in. is that we, as long as we peer review among the far service, then we're going to have the same, the same yeah. problem around because we're all reading and we're uh, drinking from the same same source. Uh, I would say, um, well, fire safety engineers. I mean, probably they had a say. Yeah. Yeah. And they could have in different environments, different countries, different, and there, were, there was not enough of that. And I, I guess we started yeah. all, we got in this um, fire instructor training and this trend of compartment fire behavior training without actually having all the pieces together or someone pointing out, okay, this might go wrong or you guys may be wrong on this one or that one. And we just took a model and we replicated it over and over and over. This yeah, but what, everybody, everybody, everybody thought that was a pretty sweet no, concept. Yeah, so, I mean. Yeah, but nobody, yeah, nobody questioned the model. Well, but, not, not, not enough people anyway. No, not enough, no, no. And, uh, but I think is, that, I mean, like uh, what you see now, I don't, I don't think, I think the, tr- well, the situation is changing, I would say. Oh, it is. But, but yeah. in, that, what's happening now is the cross-pollination between the, American, the North American Fire Service and the European Fire Service is equally valid for both bars. And, and, oh, yeah. and it took a lot of time for me because that was part of my bias saying that before, because it is unquestionably that the, the American Fire Service has a tremendous amount of things to learn from the Europe. Europe. I, we're grossly simplifying it's here, it, but, uh, but, but but especially from ventilation practices go, yeah, and, and so on. Ventilation practices, and this is something I've been a uh, huge advocate of bridging the gap between the two yeah. firefighting cultures. And this is something I... For a while, I grew up in in the United States that made me very close to the American culture as well. Yeah. When I came into the fire service, that was something I had always my my eyes as well. Well, how is this done over there? And can I bring something of what they're doing back home? Maybe something of what I'm doing is useful over there. And th- that is something that cross-filling, that bridging the gap, I think, has had a lot of enormous results this is just one experience we had some years ago i remember i took fire chief from my fire department and it had also a fire structure and i decided i want them to see some of the stuff that was being done in the united states and we all traveled together to the united states and that was revealing in many aspects I was revealing for both stuff that we were doing the right way and stuff that we needed to change. Well, it took me a long time to re- to, 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 to you have to really peel off because behind some things that I thought was entirely crazy and sort of am like this massive fear of steam, this uh, giant fear of pushing fire and so on. Yeah. Behind those, there was there was a lot of stuff that was actually true. There was a lot of things that could be used to enhance, for instance, but, stream practice and everything. So there was, but I had to peel that off to get to the core and see you, where you was. Need, you need an open mind. Go there, but it's also the fact that you're coming from outside the box that actually helps you as well to actually put the right balance into some of the uh, statements that you are yeah. confronted to. And then some of the stuff was, was really good and could be extrapolated right away. Some of the problems were problems that were generated because they were doing things some other way. There, there was a lot of learning. There was a lot that we took off from, 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 from that trip. And uh, uh, I don't think we do that that often. I, I, no, think, I mean, there's some of us. I mean, I, I know you're a strong believer. I'm a strong believer being visiting the, the fire tomorrow. services in the U.S. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, in the U.S. probably two or three times a year and yeah. having exchanges. So, so this is something that 
But still, I think in both camps, there's there are people that just are turning. Oh yeah, well, they must. Running, I mean, the, but that's the not, norm. That's that's normal. I mean, you, you, most people, most is, firefighters in Sweden, never ever yeah even it, visit their it, it neighboring is, station. It becomes harder and harder to deny some of this stuff. Okay, yeah. so so uh, some of the influences when you see well the research is coming from the U.S. is not applicable in 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 Europe. I mean. That is harder and harder to to actually uh, defend and support. And, oh, and, 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 lot, and people are losing that battle. So uh, we're meant to get closer and closer. I would say, and at the very end, we're going to have difference in gear, trucks, appliances, and stuff like that, and some traditions. Well, uh, and, yeah, so I think it, it, yeah, but, uh, well, yeah, but well, I, I think it will, it will mesh out. I think you're gonna transitional attack. For example, this is something that probably the comeback of that exterior exterior offensive attack is something that has happened both in Europe and the United States more or less at the same time. We yeah, have, and the, yeah, we have yeah, several absolutely. departments throughout Europe right now that had implemented already for a couple of three years uh, trans, uh, this exterior exterior offensive attack, and they have very good results. They were proud to to show it in Twitter in their photos and and everything. Yeah, but uh, this is different because in Europe, I think it was a lot of times. A lot of times, uh, they're different, but, but yeah. a lot of times it wasn't that much that it was like prohibited, like in the United in my States. Case, in my case, it was absolutely prohibited. Yeah, I know, I know, but it, but a lot yeah. of cases in Europe, it was like. It was simply a fact that you did never train it. Like it was like, it, it might have been that it started to be because well, the, the, rules, be the rules for us they started like that. I'll do the translation. You do, uh, you do a fire attack from interior to exterior, from the level down to the level up. Yeah, and and yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, we, like, yeah, yeah. And we and we never had that. I know a lot of countries and a lot of places don't have that. It was more like a, like a, if you don't train on it, you stop doing it. Okay. So like it was like so like it just would you fell with, away. Would you because, agree? I mean, as soon as we ha had we started to have some pieces of research and and some people pointing that direction, that some the fire department, some fire instructors in both camps, they started to apply it. Oh, and, absolutely. It's yeah. a it's a and, and, and those. By Without the way, but those, by the way, they were looking at each other, and then hey, it's working over here. Oh, it works for me. Oh, as well. yeah, yeah, and absolutely. then all of a sudden, yeah. So my 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 pick in the future probably would be that, although we'll still keep some differences in the way we 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 uh, our turn uh, gear looks like and helmet looks like and stuff like that. Still, I think the tactics are going to evolve into very similar tactics. Oh, uh, oh absolutely. Transitional attack is going the same way. Violation, I would say use of prosody pressure violation has to some extent um, erased extreme values that some, some yeah, of the yeah. camps had on, on both sides and it's Trying to get into a main flow where we all we all agree as well. Yeah, I can't reason. see. I can't see, like if I like in in, in the vision ball, I can't see like for instance United States because you know there's a lot of horizontal ventilations, uh, vertical ventilations that's going to go away. Yeah. But I also think that like, it's not going to go all the way because there's a lot of occasions no. where I think it's no. very good. But I think that that will be a lot less. There will be a lot more fan used ventilation yeah and, and then, it, it's just like we are converging to a certain extent the taxes will be converging have a feeling as well that most of the fires i mean as we go into fires that are driven by contents and the contents that we have in sweden switzerland france spain the united states canada they resemble more and more i mean it's oh, just yeah, this, it's the just... same crap out of the same uh, same places so uh that is what's driving the, 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 the fires, actually. And so by, the fires are going to look alike more and more. Oh, yeah, mean, yeah. Although yeah, our yeah. construction is going to be different, I would say that construction is playing less of a role than it used to have. Well, in, in the initial tactical, like, where, like where it makes a role, like in, in, your, in your neck of the wood, uh, like uh, at least in Spain and mostly in, in Europe, 
southern part of Europe, it's mostly um, when you talk multi residential houses, mo mostly brick or concrete. It's concrete, yeah. And, and so what what it's makes what makes Sweden and, and 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 North America more similar is that most of our construction when it comes to residential is, is wood based uh, wood frame construction yeah. with a lot of cavities and everywhere. So you get you get running fires in, inside of construction. That, that, yeah. But that is like next step. That would be next different. Step. Initially, yeah. it doesn't really matter. It's just a yeah. fire in a box. Yeah. Uh, the development it, of the fire, I don't think it's first stages that will, that are significantly different. But I think that we're going to enter some of the problems that the United States have more, unless legislation would change, which is not. But the United States is better at building cheap, uh, which means that, like, instead of using real wood on the exterior, you just slap on a plastic facade on your house that looks yeah. like wood, and that will come to Sweden. And also, I, I, I would presume, uh, and that will make a change because we're not we're not used to, and I really recognize the difference. We're not as used to, you know, North America having uh, big exterior fires on arrival, where no. that two and a half inch line will make a real difference in knockdown power. We. If we go that road in construction, we are in construction types, we may have to think about as well changing the density of fire stations that we have oh, yeah, and responding times. Yeah. And this and, is and that's one the thing. thing. America, America the, has much tighter sta the station than I Yeah, yeah and, and I this do. is because the, the and, and this it is something that so, at some point I would say as soon as that type of problems appear, I think there's going to be. Um, insurance companies are going to to actually try to 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 either um, rise their primes very very high because is, well, because the context is completely different. I mean, yeah. it's not that very same house. Whether you have a responding crew within within ten minutes or five minutes, or you had a responding crew uh, uh, after thirty minutes, it's going to be it's going to have a different outcome. So yeah, especially the when, well, the biggest problem is the neighboring house. Like for the house on fire, it's mostly yeah. Like what 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 you get with more combustible facades. The pro problem because the first house is like gone. The yeah. problem is the the two houses on the next to it. Where, so, where so, you so arrive, I presume where you arrive, I mean, insurance and companies and the codes will probably uh, will try to limit that kind of construction. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I would say. That that would be my pick. Otherwise, it's it's well, going it, to be a risk. I mean, we're, it, it, we're it increasing the risk. It didn't we're happen not... in the United States, and they're all for money. So why wouldn't happen here? Like, I don't. The insurance company hasn't been able to well, regulate the, my, that. My, I mean, they already had more density of fire stations because they're covering as well medical service. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah they're but, running EMS while. Most of the fire services in Europe, there is strictly fire. So when you already have a structure, okay, of a network of fire stations that are dealing with that, with that medical uh, EMS, I mean, probably it's easier to jump and say, okay, I already have fire stations over here to get. Oh yeah, to, to, absolutely. To deal with that problem. Th this is where I I I I see a, um, a difference. Um, yeah, eventually it will. Will it come? Yeah, I don't know. But I don't think it will make a breakthrough and it'll completely change the uh, construction types in, in Europe. This is my. This is what. No, I, mean. I think now. No, a lot of things will at least will take a lot of time. Take a lot like, of time. Like yeah. culture, like if someone just a culture thing. If so, someone puts a plastic facade on a house in Sweden. It's like it's deemed to be seen. Mm, that's, that's not nice. That's not nice. That's yeah, not absolutely. nice because they want the lot. Well, and most people would want to have real quality, which is like they want to have real wood, they want real stuff. So I mean, yeah. I've, I've from a European culture on 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 house uh, on the real estate. I mean, that's an investment that you do for a very long time, yeah. I mean, which probably the cost of property compared to the cost of construction, whether you. I mean, you try to save some money in the quality of the construction. That's not going to be a big saving up. No, no not at all. Price. Because the property is worth much, yeah, much yeah. more. So this is, yeah. That but it's is, more of a, in that case, and I don't think that the United States, some almost jokingly say, like, why would I spend money on my house and painting it? I'm just going to tear it down in 10 years and build a new one. Like, like you could just tear down the house every 10 years and build a new culture. one. 
and 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 if uh, yeah. and, and in that case maybe they do not bother about like sustainability like yeah. well, why would you paint your house with, with why would you build it by wood exterior walls and paint it every 10 years you know if i'm still just going to tear it down and build a build a new one um i don't i, I don't know i don't think that common that was more of a side yeah. exaggeration sure that happens but mo- if i go to america most houses yeah. i see are not under 10 years old 10 years old there's a lot of houses from a lot the, of population uh, in 50s Europe. and 60s and 70s yeah. you see those those smaller houses from from the baby boomers and so on like you're going even yeah. back further but 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 going back to like i i think that it, i think there is that, that it's there is a context differences but i for sure that the tactics are going to be still going to be very similar because like the the baseline of no, that those are going to converge i think yeah. tactics are going to converge this is my in fire attack, I would say they yeah. it will look more and more similar. And I get some of those fire research reports and then famous tactical considerations. And I would say, well, um, I can transfer almost all of them. Yeah, but I would say that most of them already exist. At least, yeah, the, but uh, we didn't have that support. No, and, no, we didn't have, no. We, I mean, we, we had we reports, really. we had, uh, what we had, okay, most close the door and all that stuff, we already knew that, and we, we say, what, well, but we already knew that, yeah, but we didn't have a, a, a real, actual research report. No, no, we had, did, we, didn't, had, we didn't have videos to teach it, and we didn't have video, uh, something that was meant, uh, that was done exclusively for the fire. No, 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 it's well. fantastic, yeah. 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 But but I would say like like that's not where if you again we're grossly generalizing but for the European Fire Service that's not where 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 the European Fire Service go like oh we have to close doors that was like okay well that's obvious yeah it's, right it's, it's, it, it, there may be nuances like where we should maybe we should always right. close the doors so on nuances can be better yeah but the is, biggest uh, part with the European Fire Fire Service is is is, is, is for instance transitional attack. It's going to be nozzle nozzle practice and, and stream so flow path chefs, content. flow pass contest. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that is a, like a nuance. Yeah. We knew about the chimney effect overall. Knew about don't be above the fire. Yeah, it's a chimney well, no, effect. Nobody, we know about wind driven fires. Th- this is stage in time. Probably nobody is going to rediscover things in 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 fire, but probably shape it in a way and frame it in a way which is better understood better oh absolutely uh, yeah. and yeah. this is this is where the the credit goes i would say and being able to actually demonstrate with a scientific ex- experiment put that in a very simple uh, tactical consideration and then i thought some of them although we knew them they were some of them were still under under discussion here yeah. Again. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I'm not uh, taking credit for that. Yeah. The, the thing. There's nuances, and it, it gives us more data to be more precise in yeah. in those things. But so but I, the overall things, those are not the big surprises. I think that the most again, again going back, the biggest surprises for 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 Europeans in general, which at least in Sweden, it's like the external streams come back. That's a big one. Uh, even though Sweden has been doing external attacks with yeah. with fog nets and everything for 15 yeah. years. But we never did it with a stream, uh, in a in a in a controlled, thought out process. It might happen, but it's it's not a yeah, controlled external streams, control ventilation, uh, flow path. Conscious. Flow path became became much better, better defined, much better yeah, taught. Yeah, awareness. Yeah. Uh, what else? I would say the theory was all there, but but, but it was it, it was much better defined. It was much better taught. Or Frame. is better taught afterwards the the research. That you yeah, wrote. framing and framing and putting limits to PPV as well. And this putting is, words to stuff. Words matter to you yeah, also. Like, like you do. I mean, air track like the, 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 yeah. which which came from the Swedish Fire Service way before that. When like when when they wrote, uh, they, they came from other places also. But like the concept of air track going from inlet to outlet that existed. 50 years ago like yeah. with the close the door and everything again but it it i think for sweden maybe less than but but for most europe it put a put a better def- definitions on it didn't help it? a lot yeah I mean, it's helped a lot i mean it's, it's helped as well to stop some of the discussions that were endless and uh, at that point it's like okay now we have a starting point and that, that is we're going to put it into into practice 
Yep. So, uh, yeah, I would agree in that. So, yeah. so well, we wanted to talk about just end off on another one. That's when we talk about like uh, uh, the report is going to be the next one for you all, like combining tactics and so on. Yeah. Which to me is like it's exciting, but it's also not very exciting because I think that like there's, I think it's sort of already figured out like how to do it, but it, but it, they will quantify it like maybe more. Yeah. And they have data and they have videos, so which is going to be excellent. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. But again, I think that's, I don't think that's going to be a real, really new like revelations. But anyway, like that when in Sweden, that started my sure because we had the interior attack. That's been like the default for the world for 50 yeah. years. Going inside and kill the fire. The Sweden started tw 20 years ago by implementing like 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 the cobra and stuff like yeah. that, like shooting through a wall, and that yeah. changed. Like now, it's not only an interior attack. Now it is some kind of coordination between outside and yeah. inside, and and at the same time or earlier than that, ventilation became a part. So so yeah. Sweden started much earlier, in, in like if you want to call it combined fire attack or yeah. some kind of like how do you. How do you choose between the tactics and how do you combine them sequentially to make sense of it? Like if you can't start a fan before you do the interior fire attack because then you get a big fire. Like all these timing things that you do. So I, I go back I go back to the very beginning. We understand what we want to do and why we do things in the far in in, in the fire ground. But but when it, Yeah, you know, when did you like when we realized that we needed to go that way, yeah. Oh, we were, when did you actually thought about like, like here we have like different? Well, it was well, first, first of all, like like it's not enough with just interior attack. We have to like connect the we have to connect the pieces better. Like so, it was a staffing problem. I would say when we when were, was this? Like, can you give a date? Like, yeah, I would say two thousand eight, two thousand six around that time we started to realize that we were having um that we were teaching tactics and that we were teaching those tactics after a big cities were doing that with huge staffing okay and then we needed to do a very similar job just at the very line of the uh jurisdiction we were confronted to um okay jurisdiction lo looks very like in in a borderline okay so you wouldn't be able to tell the difference whether you're in madrid you're already in Guadalajara, where at that point we were taught to uh follow tactics from departments that were showing up to the same incident with triple the stuff that we had so at that time, at some point, say, well, wait a minute, we can't do all that at the same time, and then we we were trained by them and say, well, you guys better stay home because you don't have enough stuff and you can't do that, and then at that point you say, well, I I need to do something on whether I have eight people, I have uh, eighteen people like you guys have, or I have four, six, whatever. Uh, the amount of people I have, I will need to sequence my 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 tactics. Once you start sequencing your your tactics, you, know, you put the search and rescue operation. You you have the violation. You have the fire suppression. You have everything, and you you start realizing that well, the environment is absolutely it's extremely dynamic, and then if you're able to real time decide which is your priority at that point, okay? Well, your priority is, al is always going to be alive and stuff, but what you need to do at that point to actually meet your priority, your, yeah. your objective, that's going to change, and then you put in place that tactic. And so I would say it was around 2006 to 2008, driven by uh, staffing problems, uh, I would say, and um, and the will as well to be able to apply to identify as I said which was the tactic that tactic that we needed to do in every little bit in that timeline. And this is it's how a, it's a, 
sorry if I interrupt, but isn't the same question, I, uh, the same, I think, thought line I have with flow. Like, added staffing, which is in that regard, same as added flow, allows you to be sloppy. You can be inefficient. What? I'll put, reduce, I'll, I'll reduce, I like to put it the other way. Short stuff in requires to be extremely efficient on the fire path. Yeah, for but both, well, it's the same. For, the, the, yeah. Well, you have to be efficient, but the thing yeah, is, with, for two you, reasons, if you're if you're overpowering the fire with with manpower and flow, which I'm not against overpowering yeah. the fire, but that like that allows you to be like you're not really efficient with your how you dispose your manpower because it doesn't really matter if you like have one standing and waiting for breaking a window. Same as flow, like it doesn't really matter if you flow a little bit too much if you don't care about water damages. And then, but at some point. And it, that happens for every fire department. At some point, that's going to be a penalty because you're not efficient. You all you always have a limit. Right? But whether you are going with 100 liters per minute, 500 liters per minute, 1,000, or if you're going with 5 manpower of 15 or 50, you meet a limit. And if you're not efficient with 5, you're not going to be efficient with 50. So I think that the, 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 the talk about sequencing, like it's equally important if you're 50. It's just that it doesn't really notice it most of the time. It is harder to notice. And then when you're running in crews of six, then it becomes actually a necessity to, to oh, be that way. It's critical. Not only for efficiency, but also for fire, fire safety. Yeah, so and effectiveness. What, what, you're not yeah. going to be effective if you're, if you're... Yeah, but I mean, as of at the time where I was... Uh, fire officer on, I was running operations, but I was also responsible for fire, for uh, training. And then, and then my, my full, my view is that, well, we're training people to do things in a way we need, we need to be safe in what we do. So we need to understand what we're doing. We have less, the fact that we only have six people on the fire means that we need to be extremely careful in the choices that we make. When we are, when we're twenty on the fire, sometimes some of the choices can be, or you, 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 the margin is larger. Yeah, you get away with more because you get you get away with more. It's true. It's, as it's well, a, you, you also have a different problem that you accountability and so on. But yeah, in efficiency management, you get away with more because you can be. So, so my, my, as a training officer, this sequencing and, and this combined attack uh, concept or whatever you want to call it, 3T, whatever, came from trying to be efficient on the far ground, safe on the far ground while our staffing was limited. And I mean, I think the, the way, I think it's, it's the same in Sweden where it started. We've always been like, like Spain, we don't have a lot of manpower. We, you arguably even have less firefighters than Sweden have. Um, so, so like manpower has always been an issue that we have to be efficient. But I, again, I think that Sweden was forced earlier to do it also because of the introduction of tools like the fog nail and, 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 and yeah. cobras, which, which, which is then added on with like, again, with the reintroduction of the like the, the exterior stream, yeah. which also came before in Sweden with the CAFS attack and so on, because CAFS started way before UL started and, and NIST started looking at the exterior streams. We had like CAFS systems where you also, that, the, the, the default way of using that one was a straight stream through a window from the outside and then put the fan on and move in. It, it was the same thing. But for some reason, like you could do it with a calf straight stream, but you never do it with a straight stream water. Yeah. Like, like it was like dots, dots hadn't been connected yet. Yeah. So there, there was, there was like the obvious problem in hindsight, but we were, we were, and we still are really bad at actually combining those different tools. We're getting better. I, I would say we're getting better, better every year. Yeah. But it's still, it's, it's complicated. Even, even when you have a small amount of people and the coordination of that, that sequencing should be right when you're more people is even harder. Like making it's sure even, that yeah. you don't then like yeah, too, probably, I too mean, soon, too, too early, too, too soon, probably, too late. So yeah, on. probably the fact that we were, we were, our stuff and was limited and 
I would say as well that the crews that we had, they were they're extremely talented as well for this sequencing uh, yeah. stuff. This was a concept that very soon got they got a grip into it and and made a lot of sense and 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 even the uh, way we drafted our safety or standard operational guidelines or procedures, however you you name it. It's actually like a flow, like a, a timeline with different boxes in which actually di different things could happen at the same time depending on what you decided. Yeah. And, 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 and that was something that was, because we were very, we were a few, probably it was easier to implement, but I have to, you, yeah, we need to credit as well. I would need to credit as well the, the, uh, the staff, the, uh, the, Man, the firefighters and, and fire command and crew managers as well in 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 the fire brigade I, uh, where this was developed. I think can I also say in in Sweden uh, one issue was uh, again I'm simplifying, but it was a little bit like when well, you became a crew commander and crew, uh, crew commander equal captain in America, like, like you, yeah. you never go inside, like the firefighters are, are alone and inside pretty much. Uh, and we have fairly well trained firefighters, I would say fairly well trained and any work system. I don't, I, said, yeah. I don't have a problem with officers just going inside. It's just, it's, it's flavor, pick your flavor. Like it's, they're, they're cons and pros and cons and yeah. everything. But, but so, so the topic could take it out of time, but it, but it was like this, like, when, when a Swedish fire officer pretty much said, well, this is the door you're going to go into, go in and, and find the people or, or fight the fire. It was pretty much like, okay, do, I can go out and do other things, like call for more resources and do other things. It was yeah. more like they, they passed on the torch of actually fighting the fire to the firefighters on the inside. Yeah. And the firefighters going like, oh, well, we need this, we need this, this is going yeah. well, this is going poorly. You were given a mission and then the mission never changed or no, changed they, they, really No, little. they pretty much, they pretty much sorted yeah, it out this, themselves this in there. Is, this is something that probably had to change also in crew commanders or commanders. Yeah, they have outside. to take rest. Yeah, you stay in the outside, but you still dynamic, you're still looking to the outside, you're trying to figure out what's being done just by I mean, the now you have external like, signs on the on the fire. And yeah, but well, that was sort of done, but you also like that when, when we added on like cobras and fog nails and then, and then we had ventilation, but like the, the it's like a I'm still trying to make this like change so that it's like natural like the the crew commander in Swedish system, which I think I would, I would presume we have a problem, need to retake the responsibility for making the the coordinated attack, because okay. it's like it's like past. It was almost it almost like I don't know a lot of people would agree with me, but this but this is my opinion. A lot of it's like you handed over the torch to really fight the fire to the firefighters on the inside, yeah. because it was like the default solution. Just go in there and fix it. Yeah. It might not be the most efficient one, but now, but now we say like, well, you have to combine more efficiently exterior streams, fog nails, ventilation, yeah. uh, everything. That decision has to be taken on the outside where someone can have that control and saying that the yeah. interior attack is one, one element. And it needs to be sequenced and coordinated with a yep. guy in the window and someone with a fan and someone just putting a fog nail through a window, whatever it might be. And that that change, which I would say the Swedish fire service wanted to do 15 years ago and the implementation of the Cobra and so on, which didn't really work because the, 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 the if we if Sweden have in general good firefighter training, which I would, which I would say we have by international standard, we have poor officer training. In relationship, we I'm not saying we necessarily have just poor officers. I say the yeah. tra training we have is is uh, all the time substandard, at least in relationship to the training the firefighters get. So a lot of the emphasis is placed on firefighters solving the problem and they can't solve it when it, it revolves around we, we lack, I mean, we lack general in Europe it was not the case where I can, came from where we put a lot of emphasis on tactical training, but we do a lot of training on techniques, on, on phenomena, on reading the fire, but we were 
we didn't put that much emphasis actually in coordinating operations or yeah, having so this, yeah. this or all of a sudden command and control courses went into like huge operations in which you were playing on top of a table. Yeah, it was, yeah, 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 it was just, just big, it was, there, there, there was a gap in between. There was yeah, missing. there was, we were going from the Nassau all the way to a big time wildfire incident. Yeah. And, and while that coordination were, even if it's a single crew, uh, in a fire, that coordination between the different bricks, the different elements yeah. we're using along that timeline was not coordinating. So um, I guess for us, it was really critical to develop a lot of that uh, training. This is like small analogy on soccer playing. I mean, you can have an excellent technique with the ball here and, 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 and then, but it actually to, if you want to play good soccer, you need to play as a team and then you need to, to, to repeat and repeat and play. And that, so, so put in tactical training, this is something that we don't train that much in Europe. No, no. And I, I would say this, all we, we train, uh, we train the elements, separately like exactly we don't put we them don't together put, we don't put we, them, yeah, no, we, no. standard fire yeah. standard fire tech training will take okay some theory well then we'll go into a demo container then to attack container then a little thing and here and there and maybe at the very end like a tactical exercise all together we think things need to be we need to play to provide much more attention to when we put all the elements together yeah. and, and, and then we 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 can debrief all together and say well this was done why this was done all all together how the different bricks combine together in that given the situation and the situation changes after a while and, and it's I, repeat yeah. and repeat or repeat it and i think i think that's one one area where i think the united states have been better yeah, I, I, I. With that being said, I think that a lot of things they have, the, the the pieces they have coordinated have been lacking, and I don't agree with a lot of the relation practices has been yeah. going on. I don't agree. They they should use a, like a fan more and so on. Yeah. So, but 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 they've there a lot more a lot more fo focus on tactical training. Yeah, tactical training on, was, on the yeah. like company officer level. Yeah, tactical training was something. What was one of the elements that we took? What we saw in the United States that we need to train like that much more. Yeah, we need to. to okay, yeah, well, you know the techniques, and then um, you know your tools. You know the techniques now. There's just step it up, just scale it up into those tactics, and. Um, it's, yeah. I think it's fantastic to see really good American officers to operate. Oh yeah, it's really smooth. I love it. There, it's much more, it's much more, uh, but I mean, then again, there's other problems. I don't really dis agree with all the decisions they take, but how, but how they take the decisions. Just, I mean, just a simple example. I mean, you use, you just listen to the uh, radio traffic in an American operation. Oh, and well, you, yeah, and you actually to... realize, and you actually uh, realize what's happening. Oh yeah, this, it, 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 yeah, 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 after, yeah. Yeah, after a while, you know, oh, yeah, I know what's going on. This is sort of like a radio, like... Yeah, they're, uh, much more ra dis they're much more disciplined, they're, this, they're much more thought it, through in how to communicate, for instance. Yeah, you go, same thing in Europe, and at least uh, the three <laughs> countries where, I, where I've worked, and yeah, <laughs> operation, you actually don't know what's going on. No, it's a shatter, chatter, it's chatter, a chatter, chatter. You don't know who's who's on the radio, who is transmitting, who is no, it's, what, it what's going on. Like yeah, that. yeah, it, it, it is messy. So that that it reflects, more or less again, we're simplifying here. This, yeah, this but that less. reflects a little bit the way or how much tactical training we we we. Play. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's a reflection of that tactical training. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and um, yeah. So I think I think that yeah, like when we go back there. I think that. Um, one one of the I mean we 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 have a struggle with like continuously we have a struggle with creating better fire behavior training like with, with all the problems involved yeah. we have a we have a struggle of of creating uh, better fire suppression training like how do yeah. you use your streams and everything but I think we're getting better at that and we're getting a lot more knowledge and we're working on it. Um, um, 
Uh, but I don't think on the tactical side we're getting that much better. No, I don't think so. That's I, what I, my and, point with coming here. And, and, and this is where I was going back when we were talking about the big volume saying we were too focused in droplet size while we were not able to put those tactics in the fire ground. We, we didn't try yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so th that's why I, I think some of the tactical choices on what was our, were more important were more important as in your in in Europe right now. I mean, I would guess we're struggling more, more on the tactical side than on the far behavior understanding of what's going on. Although we there's a way to go. I mean, you can you can you can put it like this. I mean, um, fire behavior training is super important to understand and so on. And just to get people to buy into the right tactics, you need to have fire behavior training to realize. Yeah, how the tactics uh, that why should you do it in a certain way and so that, on. So, that's a why. so there's yeah. a lot of reasons why we need fire bear training. But like you said, if if you like say you have a tool, oh, I'm gonna create uh, X amount of smaller droplets and that's yeah. gonna be more efficient. Like, oh, go, sure, that's the case. Let's say you, you're let's say you're fifty percent more efficient with your nozzle or with something like you make like fifty percent. Oh, it sounds yeah. a lot. But if you make a small difference in how you handle that tool, like if you direct it there to there, or if you're in the wrong room, yeah. or if tactically even not, not even close, you get a thousand percent improvements by... Or by if, it, if the officer made the choice of putting water from the outside before you went in the, in the inside, and you don't, you're not confronted yeah. to such a fire. No, such a fire. I mean, this, is why, uh, why, why, this is why I... I I would say the focus for me needs to be in understanding, identifying the situation, which is dynamic, and making the choice, the right choice in that point, and, and knowing that something very dynamic and it's going to change, and you, you go like that, and that choice may be only valid for the uh, next 60 seconds, and then you're going to have to change gears into something else. And um, that's where I, I, I think we need to to put a lot, a lot of energy. Yeah, and still, and still going back to that we saw that before. Like it, I, I've, I've been to, I've been to incidents where I, I could, from my perspective, say that like I, I think I, 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 I set the right tactic, the right plan, and everything. Yeah. But it, but, but for some reason it falters because of individual faults. Like I can put, put perfect tactic. Like oh, you do an exterior tack here, and then we could put a fan on here. We're gonna blow everything out. Yeah, move in. And then you go like, well, the stream was not properly placed. The stream angle was wrong. The fan was placed too far from the yeah, entrance. And then, that, it, and then it all just it yeah, turns but, into crap yeah, anyway. Th that is yet another variable in the, in, the, in the intervention. That is part of the scenario itself. Okay, you come up, you identify what's happening. You say from everything that we'll put right here, I'm going to put these two actions simultaneously over here. And one of them is not working because it's, either poorly, poorly understood, poorly performed, whatever you, you want to yeah. put. It's not working like you thought you had in your, and it's time to change gears. You want to give another opportunity with a different, with uh, different orders. You want to change into something else. There's still time to do that in place. This is where I, I, I think combining everything is, is, is so important. Sometimes you just take risk and say, well, I'm going to try these two things, but I'm not 100% sure of what's going to be the result of this and this. And you say, well, it's going that way better there, so stop that there, and that is where you're going to continue with this. And, and that ability to be extremely agile, extremely fast in that decision-taking and identifying the problem, the problem is that I, I think where the tactical emphasis should be put on. Yeah, and I agree. Yeah. Like that's yeah. where tactical is, and then, but I, I don't have an answer where how like if you have a if you have like a training budget, I don't, don't I can't put percentages on. Of course, it varies also because depending on what well, your group needs. But but like you said, like how much should I dedicate toward fire barrier training? How much should I dedicate toward fire suppression training? Well, depending and how much you get dedicated on to tactical whom? training. Are you were talking about a crew manager, a fire officer, or well, a fire yeah, of fire. course. But again, they, they, yeah, they, they, and they, and, they, and again, I 
I believe it should be more. I mean, I'm not going to show you this is 80%, 20%, no, 30%. No, this is Yeah, but the awesome. trend right now, if I, if I see where I, I think we're unbalanced. You think it's too much, too much on fire behavior and, and, and especially at crew level, crew, uh, crew company, company yeah. officer, yeah, company level. officer, uh, crew commander. I think at that point they need to go more on tactical. Yeah. We we had a discussion. Uh, uh, this this was like uh, several years ago. We we talked about the 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 expectation on, for instance, on a battalion chief for an instant commander, yeah. and I know that I I in the Swedish system. Again, you simplify a lot, but in general, like in the Swedish system, it's like everyone has their own domain. Like as, as an instant commander, I'm not, I don't you have to know like how to start the pump or how yeah. the fan should be placed. Yeah. Like every, I just need to know like how to, how to manage resources and set expectations and goals and so on. Uh, while you, you, if I'm not mistaken, you, uh, you said more like, well, as a, as a battalion chief in, in, in Spain, it's really expected that you should not only know your stuff you should also know the people below you and should also pretty much know the firefighters job um that it was more like well you should you should you if you don't know more than the firefighter about the pump or at least as much as fire about the pump you're not being respected as as being knowledgeable and so on um then that, that might not be the case but but yeah. before you answer i'll let's take my point if if the problem with the former like like the problem with the, if the incident commander doesn't understand how to place the fan is that they have no ability to evaluate they see the fan standing there they don't know how it should be placed to be efficient yeah they can't go like this and go like this is not working like they can't if they, they if they don't know how the stream should be placed in a window they yeah. just know that 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 is one well, option I, i'm having i am my starting point is that well, he's already have that training as a firefighter. It he might, has, it might not even have been a firefighter, and that in, as a firefighter, it might be ten years ago. There was okay. no training like that. So, probably requires more training. But then you have as, a crew, because, because as the, a crew commander, you'll probably not. I mean, your responsibility is what you have in your hands, and probably requires more more training than the. Uh, your previous position as a as a firefighter. That's well, that's the thing. I think that we have a problem because yeah. either either you you say that the incident commander sh should only know what the, what he or she should know, and yeah. and it's you know, if it doesn't work on a, on a task based level, it's not their problem. Well, it is, but the problem is like they, so you should know a lot up there. There's a ton of stuff you you should know, which the firefighters don't have to know. So the amount of training you have to do in that case is is vast. Yeah, and, and, and you should of be course, like a superman or super. And there woman. are people that have a better ability to retain that training Absolutely. than some others. So I would say some of the one of the um, one of the requirements to actually escalate into those positions will actually be able. If these people are actually able to have a broader knowledge and keep that knowledge at, at a certain level and and of course my perspective is it's higher you go up the more training you need well yeah and, and, and i would agree with you yeah the, and the sad and, point and is then, that the higher up you go in the swedish system the less crew, training you as get. a crew so you're a crew man, a company officer a company officer of course i mean what i'm saying you need to right now you put you need to put more into tactical because I gave for granted that you already have the the the, the fire behavior. Well, that doesn't that, that that doesn't in reality it's not the case because that's you maybe it was ten years ago you was a firefighter and the training I, you got there. And then, and then I'm getting it all wrong. I think getting it all wrong in the sense well how I'm going to teach someone tactics if he he if he's not able to understand reading fire or yeah, but that's what it, I said. You yeah, have you, to yeah you you need to start and then. We go one step beyond one to into battalion chief. You, you need to be, uh, you need to be acquainted as well with the problems that a crew commander is going to have. So you need to have that tactical uh, training at company officer level as well to be something, something that you you're able to 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 do what you've done in the past, so you can related into your that position that you have afterwards uh, this is my 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 that is my my point of view 
Yeah, no, I, and, and oh, I didn't know, but but <laughs> again, the the practical problem is, of course, that if the let's say a firefighter trains two hundred years, two hundred hours every year, like so the Swedish fire, the Swedish full time fire probably trains one hundred fifty two hundred two hundred hours yeah. every year. Then a crew commander would have to train like three hundred hours a year, and uh, and an incident commander would have to train like four or five hundred hours every year. And I can say like like how in in practice what it looked like right now in Sweden is that if you're if you're well it depends on how much fire ground experience you get on this side as well. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, like, I but mean, if you just to, gross to general certain... sense, the same sensation that they, they say that if if the if the crew commander should really know. Pretty much all the things that the firefighters know and practice the same things to to know what when they're doing something wrong, doing something right, be able to correct it, be able to adapt, and so on, evaluate what's working well, or not. Well, the training switches a little bit. I mean, when I'm saying, well, they need to have fire behavior training on you know, reading, smoke, on on, they may not have the kind the same kind of amount of training in actually the techniques that they use or the tools that they use in well the again the, the, the becomes deficient because if they don't and I agree that it might be yeah they can't evaluate those things like for instance if if they don't have training with how to direct a stream let to a tension yeah. attack they can't evaluate like that stream placement is not good that's why we're not being effective overall so so if the, it's a gray zone over there, I what? mean there is a gray zone over there. Yeah, I mean, there, there is a mo there's there is a time where you're able to identify that it's not working, that and that's a wrong technique, and then you you further train to actually master that technique. So no, you don't you have to like to be able to stand there and yeah. So, but but so, there are there are, you well, understand for me what I'm it's saying, clear it's, that a, a crew commander has must have uh, more training that than a firefighter and how you go up should be the case and i'm not saying that, exactly the same but i'm exactly it's probably more yeah and um yeah and then yeah. we have a problem that like if you don't if you like a practical problem let's say that your crew commander said well ideally they should know they, they don't have to be as skilled like with an also, but they have yeah. to understand what the potentials are yeah. and they have to be able to identify when there's a firefighter not performing as expected. So they have to understand a little bit of that. So they have to be part of the training that the firefighters do, oh, like absolutely. standing there. Yeah. So then there becomes a practical problem that they have pretty much have to be on, on the same training as the, 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 the firefighters to, to know their parts and that be able to evaluate it. It's and a then good way to, to put in, in practice also tactical, all the tactical choices. Oh, absolutely. But then they also have to have extra training as crew commanders. Yeah. And, and it, again, to me, it's, it's not, I would love to have it that, like if we go down to the Swedish fire service, but in, in reality, the Swedish fire service is the opposite. So it would I mean, be really that firefighters get training. Most of the fire uh, of the fire service is like that as well. The higher you go up the ranks, the less time you have for, yeah. for, for training. Best case scenario, you have the same training they uh, a firefighter has, and that's what uh, for crew commanders. It's basically they get the same training as firefighters. This is this is where I think we need to to get better yeah. uh, being able to provide that tactical training, and that's where America is always much better. Like yeah, like a blue card system, like where you have mandatory training, you have to go through simulations, where you get a lot of that tactical training and communication training, which is which is we don't we we simply don't give. Uh, the, uh, again, I'm generalizing, but we simply don't get, get our uh, officers no, that kind no. of training. No, we don't have that. And uh, yeah, one of the missing bits. The missing bits. Okay, we'll, we'll wrap out now. Uh, and we'll uh, talk that was somewhere nice. else. That was nice. I never thought we were going to chat for a couple hours here. Oh, I, was, I, I was 